Dr. Rao, many patients are very interested in using probiotics to help manage their IBSC symptoms. Can you tell us a little bit more about probiotics and IBSC? Absolutely. Now, the probiotics has become the craze of this particular decade in managing GI symptoms as a whole. So what are probiotics? Probiotics are live organisms that are encapsulated. And the purpose of the probiotics is to replenish gut flora when the flora is disturbed. So in the gut, we have hundreds of billions of bacteria, and there are at least 500 types of bacteria in the gut. So it's a large amount of bacterial population that harbors normal in the gut. So patients with IBS-C have disturbed colonic microbiota. That we know. But how to replenish this has been a challenge. So one way has been to give probiotics. And typically, the probiotics that we have available over the counter in the market here has anything between three to up to 10 different probiotic organisms. Now, the premise is that if you put billions of these probiotics in a single capsule, that the capsule, when you swallow, goes through the gut unchanged and miraculously delivers its entire probiotics to the colon. Now, this is a premise because it is not proven in the vast majority of probiotic drugs that are available. So, if indeed the probiotic capsule gets to the colon and delivers these probiotic organisms, it is likely that there may be some benefit of this probiotic in patients with IBS symptoms. But sometimes, or many times, the probiotic capsule may split either in the stomach or the small bowel. And when it happens, then it is now delivering large amount of bacteria to the small bowel, which inadvertently may contaminate and colonize the small bowel. And now you've created a new problem of gas and bloating because of bacterial colonization in the small bowel. Normally, small bowel does not have any bacteria. But if you get this, then you've taken probiotics that have inadvertently caused harm. So there is a plus and a minus for probiotics. So it has to be done carefully. It has to be thought very carefully. And ideally, I would recommend that probiotics should be given under physician supervision rather than really picking up uh, probiotics from the supermarket. And in the supermarket today, we have hundreds of varieties. So which one do you pick? There are people sitting in garages and making probiotics, and there are some uh, manufacturers who follow very strict protocol and have very high quality products that are out there. So it's very difficult to tease it out when you walk through the shelf. Some probiotics require refrigeration and are kept refrigerated, supplied by the pharmacist refrigerated, and then you can use them because those organisms will die once they are outside the refrigerator environment. So there are a lot of these nuances that people should weigh in before generally rushing to probiotics. And more recently, you know, there have been two or three studies that have been done that have actually cast some questions as to whether they truly relieve IBS symptoms or even uh, gastroenteritis symptoms. Although there are other studies that suggest that patients with IBS symptoms benefit from, IV, from probiotics. So the jury is still out. I don't think it is mostly harmful, but really we should be taking medications such as probiotics in a more systematic way under physician guidance rather than willy-nilly picking on these drugs and making an assumption this is like a multivitamin pill that you can take safely. It is not that safe. Dr. Rao, can you tell me more about how a patient might incorporate uh, probiotic-containing foods into their diet? Oh, that's a great question. Now, there are several naturally occurring foods that contain probiotics. Now, yogurt is one classic example. Uh, there is uh, kombucha. Then there, is, um, there are other kind of fermented food products that are available. And generally, they are much more safer. You are not packing them with billions and billions of bacteria. We've been eating these fermented foods for thousands of years, and they are safe. And I would recommend, in fact, I recommend very often to patients, particularly with IBS symptoms, IBS diarrhea, or even constipation, to consume these fermented foods. There are many uh, in, in certain ethnic, for example, from India, where I come from, there are several fermented foods, such as idli, and those are, these are foods that are fermented overnight. And there are other parts of the world where they're used they can be very, very helpful in restoring the colonic microbiota flora naturally without really causing much harm.